Thank you so much for your sweet words. I'm very happy to be in Bucharest, and I'm very sorry to leave early, but I do have a parliamentary debate later this afternoon. Um, we are about, the Netherlands is about to start training the Libyan Coast Guard, um, but before doing so, I need the consent of our parliament, and they decided in all their wisdom, obviously, to do it later uh, this afternoon, so I have to cut my visit short. And that's why I was asked to do a three-minute, just a three-minute <laughs> keynote uh, speech. But no, seriously, it's an honor for me to be here today and to share my thoughts about reassurance and deterrence with you. Um, now, from my perspective, um, two things are obvious. Two things. First, Europe is currently considerably less secure than it has been in the past. In particular, Russia's aggressive actions and willingness to use force for political gains have contributed to the deterioration of the European security environment. And yes, the Russian military build up in the Black Sea region too is disconcerting. Now, two, a second point that is obvious to me is that we must maintain security in order to remain secure. In other words, as allies, we must deal with our security challenges in unison. And NATO must continue to signal its readiness to respond to threats in 360 degrees. Now, in the chain security environment, it is fully and totally understandable that deterrence and collective defense are yet again high on our agenda. After the illegitimate annexation of Crimea, and Russia's involvement in the conflict in eastern Ukraine, NATO responded in a balanced manner by adopting measures, and this allowed us to immediately show, demonstrate solidarity and resolve. But these were short-term measures. Ladies and gentlemen, it's unlikely that the European security environment will improve anytime soon. Therefore, we must shift our attention from just reassurance to deterrence. At the same time, we should, of course, keep the channels of communication with Russia open in order to avoid stupid accidents and misunderstandings. We discussed it as well this morning. Now, in my view, credible deterrence depends the ability to meet threats of any kind. So the alliance must maintain as much flexibility as possible. So to be sure, I do not think that we should return to the static defense of the Cold War era. If we are serious about improving our collective ability to act, all allies must enhance their ability to rapidly deploy forces. The NATO response force, in particular the NRF, should be prepared to quickly deploy wherever threats may emerge. The NRF should also exercise in different parts of NATO's territory, including in the Black Sea region. So yes, I do refer, I'm saying this to my colleague in particular, I do refer to a robust, persistent, rotational presence. <laughs> and let me underline that a high degree of flexibility also allows us to respond to the challenges we are facing on the southern flank. Obviously, the alliance must be able to deter Russia, but it must also be prepared to deal with fragile states and increasing migrant flows, to name just a few examples. At the same time, and as I just said, and without a doubt, a persistent presence in some parts of the alliance territory is a necessity. Forward presence, joint exercises. This presence demonstrates solidarity, and it will trigger an immediate allied response in case of aggression. Now, all this is of crucial importance as NATO must demonstrate and continue to demonstrate determination and ability to respond to threats of any kind. So we must clearly show our intent to operate without constraints also in the southeast part of the alliance. And this can be done, obviously it can be done in many ways including by having a regular NATO maritime presence in the Black Sea. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, 
I'm almost off because my plane is leaving, but in closing, I would like to stress once more that in an increasingly insecure Europe, we must maintain unity above all. Geopolitical developments and wider changes in the security context underscore the need for truly acting in unison. The unconvenient truth is that no single nation can isolate itself from a world in ter turmoil. And we must cope with this turmoil together as best as we can. Or else, or else the zone of peace and stability that we have built in Europe over decades might disintegrate and we would have no one to blame but ourselves. So there is one res response above all that we can and should give. And it is that, that is that we remain united in order to steer clear of chaos and disorder, in order to protect our freedom. Thank you very much. I wish you a fruitful conference. <laughs>